All right. So we are going to continue with the story we read yesterday. So uh, what's it called? Is our gain also our loss? Is that what it's called? Okay. Yeah. So let's head over to Google Classroom and get that opened up. So everybody should have it still. Is our gain also our loss? We're going to do three more sections today. And uh, be done. They're kind of short sections, so I don't think they'll take too long. Or today, because I said today. Yeah, so go ahead and get that opened up. Um, if you're All right. So our story yesterday, what was this? Um, that's not what I was going to ask. So thank you. I was going to say, what is our story about? But then I was reading Elijah's comment. Um, yes, you will come back to school for AZ Merit if like, your parents and your family allow that. The way that it'll work is that the in-student kids will stay home on those days. Everything will be sanitized. And the online kids will come in that day, the next day and take the test. Well, you'll do it the day before when you're here. Yeah, so, th no. There's multiple days where it'll happen. We're sending out information. It's going to your parents, probably this week. So, yes, you will be hopefully back here. You, you can't take the AZ Merit at home. So, you have to be here to take it. That's how it works. Because the state doesn't allow it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of the state tests. I'm not going to lie, those are some of the most boring days ever because you guys take the test. I would rather take the test than be the teacher administering the test because all I can do is walk around. I can't read a book. I can't go on my computer. I can't do anything except for walk around this room. It is one of the most boring days ever. And I'm going to have to do it twice as long because we have to do it for the online kids and the in-person kids. It's not going to be very much fun. But... Um, no, you don't. Yeah, sometimes, like, I, like, uh, like, I have homework and... Yes, but you're doing something. You're doing homework. I literally just walked around the classroom. I cannot do anything. No, no, no like, I used to have homework, homework, but now I don't. Now I have nothing to do. Yeah, but you can watch TV, read a book, play mm -hmm. video games. You can do anything in that time. I have to watch you guys take a test for hours. Quite boring. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, let's do our work today. So uh, this story, what was it about? What was the main point of it? Uh, because we gain something, we also lose something. Okay, so we gain something and then we also lose it. But what are we gaining? We're gaining technology. New technologies. And what are we losing? Technology. The old technologies, right? It could potentially be childhood technologies, or it's just 
technology. Yeah, just old technology, right? It doesn't have to be from when you were a kid. Um, but that was kind of it. The dad is trying to show them this kid all these cool technologies and commercials and things, and she's like, I don't really get it. And he's like, that was the best thing ever. Um, it's kind of like the Blockbuster thing, right? Like, I loved Blockbuster when I was a kid because it meant I got to go pick movies and all this stuff. And I feel like it's just not something that I can ex like explain too well to you guys, like the feeling of it, you know? That's how, well, that's how the dad feels. And then the kid is kind of like, okay, dad. Cool. Yeah. So that's kind of the gist of it, right? We gain these new technologies, but end up losing the old technologies that sometimes mean something to other people, right? Yeah, Blockbuster's going. Um, let's do, we're under making meaning. Yesterday, we did the first read chart the comprehension check, and the research. So hopefully all three of those are done. Keep in mind that the comprehension check, as always, is for our grade. And then today we're going to finish up this section. So we're going to do close read the text, analyze the text, and analyze craft and structure. All three of them don't have very many questions at all. So I don't think it'll take us too long. So let's start with close read the text. What we're going to do, not with a group, because COVID, with each other. We are going to ask some questions that we might still have and the conclusions that we have. So let's start with, let me scroll down, a little. some questions. What sort of questions do you have based on this um, reading? Alan, go ahead. What was the commercial? What was the meaning? of the commercial so the one that the dad showed her yeah. so what was the meaning of the commercial we don't really know something that we could have answered what other questions do we have any sort of question that comes up Alex? What's her name? But yeah, they don't ever say her name. Is it? Do we know? It could be, but we aren't completely sure. What else could we ask a question about? Did the boys go in the pool? Did they ever get to go in the pool? Yeah. Where did they live? To did the boys ever go in the pool? Yeah. For all we know, it never got above seventy-five, and they just watched it all the time and never got to go in the pool. That would be sad. Let's do one more question. What else can we question about this? One more question. What else can we have? Uh, what else? What am I trying to say? What other questions can we have based on this story? What kind of movies were at Blockbuster? I'm going to give you a minute to get that typed out or write it down. Thank you. If you have your own questions that came to mind, you're more than welcome to type those ones instead of the ones that I wrote. about 30 more seconds to type these out as always you can watch the video later if you need to
All right. And then the second part of this question is what can we conclude? What are some of the conclusions that we can make based on this story? This blog post. They both like to swim when they were kids. Like you mean like the dad and the kid in the story? And so they both like to swim because it talks about both of them swimming. The dad and the kid both enjoy swimming. Good. What else can we say for sure about this? True. Let's circle back to the technology. You guys are doing things that aren't really technology based, but this was a whole thing about technology. Kind of. You can't get candy at a red box. There was a ton of candy at Blackbusters and popcorn. Nope, there it was. A, it's a basically a movie theater. You just don't stay there. You take the movie home. You can get anything there. Okay, so she thinks that the technology is still going to be changing more and more, right? So technology will continue to change. Probably had one about the blockbuster, but it was kind of a little bit off. What else can we say about the blockbuster, though? We don't have blockbuster. Why? Why do we not have blockbuster anymore? Not even Redbox, Netflix, Disney Plus, any sort of technology. Yeah, we have all the technology to do it instead. We don't need to go to the movie store anymore. So Blockbuster went out of business. It was run out of business. Bad technology. Poor Blockbuster. Um, and then I want you guys to do one on your own. Find one conclusion on your own. Is there anything that you can say for sure based on the blog post that we read yesterday? Bless you. I'll give you about one minute to write your own and finish typing out the ones we already have. Mm -hmm. Once you're done with this one, you can close it. When do you get a computer today? Cool. We're doing a um, story, so our game is also our loss. Something like that. I can't say this title correctly. Yeah, that. All right, let's go ahead and move on from this one. So close read the text, you can close it. And then we are gonna work on analyze the text. Again, just a couple of questions here. It does say group discussion. We're not gonna do it as a group. Hopefully next year we can start doing more group activities. Although you won't be with me next year. That'll be junior high. But anyway, let's go ahead and answer the questions in number one here. Um, 
with your group slash me. Reread paragraphs six through nine. So let's go read these paragraphs first. Six through nine. They're kind of long. So I will read them to you. Six through nine. Gradually, evenings spent doing homework at lamplit desks covered in pencils, paper, and textbooks are turning into late nights under bed sheets and blankets. A Google Doc page pulled up, fingers typing aggressively on a keyboard. They can barely be seen in the dark. It seems as though I am part of the last generation that will know the satisfied feeling of stapling together a completed research paper, pages still warm from the, paper, the printer. People of the next generation will never go on a family trip to the local blockbuster in search of candy or in a comedy for movie night. They might miss out on handwritten letters from their grandparents available to read and reread for years. Do you even realize that we're all what we're all leaving behind? This morning, I was sitting at the breakfast table eating cereal when my dad came in to say goodbye before he left for work. When he saw that I was eating life cereal, a huge smile immediately crept across his face, and he started excitedly reciting a commercial that he remembered from his childhood. He called me into his office where he threw himself down in front of his desktop, desktop computer to search for an ad on YouTube. I enjoy that they put a little thing here like, what's YouTube? We already know what YouTube is. Um, eager to take me back in time with him. Watching the commercial, my modernly adjusted ears picked up on a faint hum in the background of the actors' voices. There was no snappy graphics or fast-paced cuts. In fact, the colors were a bit faded and the actors' faces were only highlighted in dim lighting. Then I turned to my dad, who was still beaming, as if the ha all the happy memories from his childhood were flashing before his eyes. Judging by his enthusiastic clapping at the end, I'm sure he didn't seem to miss the modern technology during those 30 seconds. In a world of iPhones and missions to Mars, is, is it even possible that my childhood will ever be looked at in a way that I look at my dad's? By then, will our TV shows be even crisper? Will it be unimaginable that we need a long, easily tangled wires in our ears in order to listen to music? Will my kids marvel at the idea of us old-fashioned teenagers having to wait by wall outlets for our phones to get out of the dreaded red battery zone before heading out for the night. Will they laugh at us for using pieces of green paper to buy things? Those are some good questions. Do you guys think these will happen? Um, so, so this first one, will our TVs be even crisper? So the picture and the quality, do you think that's going to get better? Yeah. Probably. Um, do you think we're ever going to need headphones with wires anymore? Mm -hmm. We already have AirPods and Bluetooth headphones, so the app's kind of gone already. Um, when my kids marvel at the idea of old-fashioned teenagers having to wait by wall outlets, so having to sit by an outlet to charge your phone. I know we still do that one, but do you think that maybe eventually we won't have to? They will not know a thing about black and white TV. Nope. That exists. I know. And then, are they going to laugh at us for using money, basically? Mm -hmm. Like the paper money, not credit cards and things like that, but paper green yeah, money. We are, yeah, we already use a lot of credit cards. I barely carry cash. It's not, I don't know, it's not sanitary right now. So there's that. But in general, there's a lot of questions there that are good. They make you think a little bit, right? So let's go look at number one here. We read the paragraphs, and then it says, discuss how the author's conversation with her father changed her perspective on technology. Has reading this selection changed your perspective on technology? So there's two things there. For the first one, you need to discuss how did the author's, oops, author's ideas about technology change. And then you also need to answer the question that if or did your uh, ideas of technology change and why? So two questions here that I want you guys to answer on your own because we don't, I think one of them is about your perspective on technology and the other one I think you can get an idea of how the author, how her idea about technology changed. So answer those two questions. I'll give you guys a few minutes to work on that. So I have the questions on mine. You answer them on yours, please. <clears throat> Mm 
I don't have any more, so. Couple more minutes on this one, finishing up this one. Um, maybe does anybody need the second form, like another form for pictures? Yeah, maybe a couple extra. Thank you, Miss Larry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember when I had them. All right, are we ready for our next part? Not yet. Need another minute or two? All right. You can keep it this way. All right, I'm going to go to the next one. If you need to finish this one, just keep working on it. If you look at number two, it's about presenting and discussing your ideas. We're going to skip that because, yeah, so we're skipping that one. Number three, though, has a question. How is modern technology helpful and harmful to society? And then it asks, what has this article taught you about the impact of technology on society? So that's the question I want you to answer. So society means like the world. Like. So how has technology, how has new technology, let's go with that, affected the world? And you could talk about how it's affected Winflow, you could talk about how it's affected schools, or the world in general. But that's the question that you're answering for number three there. And I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to work on this one too.
Well, I'm glad you're awake, Skylar, because we're supposed to be working on things and you're supposed to be at school. So I don't really have much sympathy for the fact that you're tired and not here. Everybody's tired in here. Sorry, bud. Be working on this question, please. Number three, finishing up that question. Okay, about two more minutes to finish up this section. After you finish up this one question, um, that's the analyze the text. We're done with two out of three parts. Is this I don't remember. Possibly. All right, it's looking like a lot of you guys are finishing it up. Okay, we'll do about one minute and then we'll move on to the next one. You're more than welcome to close it if you are done. I don't think you're proving your point here, Skylar, because I'm tired and I'm at work, so. It does say the name in there? Mm -hmm. Right, let's go ahead and move on to analyze craft and structure. So, I'm going to close the analyze the text. Make sure you answer those couple of questions if you can get to finish them. Um, and we're going to work on analyze craft and structure. So this one is usually where we talk about a part of writing, and then we yeah, and then we look at the type of writing. So we're going to talk about reflective writing. What does it mean to reflect on something? Kind of. Think think about your own life. If I'm going to reflect on my childhood, what am I going to do? Yeah, you're going to kind of look back on it and see how you felt during those times. So if I reflect back on my childhood, then I'm going to think about blockbusters and going to soccer practice and playing games with my mom and dad and friends and things like that, right? So reflecting is kind of going back in time in your own thoughts and feelings. So a reflective essay is a brief prose work, which is paragraph. Prose means paragraph. Um, in which an author presents his or her thoughts and feelings, or their reflections, about an experience or an idea. Most reflective writing includes the following elements. So one of the things it includes is the descriptions of a specific event, a time period, or a person that leads to new ways of seeing something. So the dad was reflecting on the commercial and was like, this is the greatest thing ever. But the kid didn't think that, right? 
but the dad was super excited. He was reflecting back on something. You can also include dialogue, which is talking to each other, the quotes and the dad and the kid talking is dialogue, or other storytelling elements that convey experiences in vivid ways. Another way is to include informal language with a thoughtful quality. So you don't have to use like the most formal things. You can use I, me, we. It just needs to have details and thoughtfulness, basically. And then finally, a discussion of the insights that were gained from the experience. In other words, what did you learn from the from reflecting back? So in is our gain also our loss. Kaylin Loesch uh, thinks deeply about her father's experiences growing up at a time when technology was not as advanced. She compares and contrasts her father's experiences and attitude towards his childhood with her own feelings about growing up in a world increasingly dependent on technology. So the farther we go in life, the more dependent the world seems to be on technology, that we can't really do a lot of things without technology which is kind of sad, but it's kind of true, right? We wouldn't be able to do the stuff that we're doing right now in terms of teaching online and in person if we didn't have the technology to do it. Um, we wouldn't have come up with a vaccine if we didn't have the technology to do it. There's a lot of things that technology is really good for and that we need it, but sometimes a little bit too much dependency on technology is not the best, right? So. Using the chart, list ways in which Loesch's observations of her father influence her own perspective. So let's open up the chart and we'll talk about what we're doing in it. So we need to answer these questions and basically say, how does this impact the kid's idea of technology? So let's do number one together. What memories of technology does Loesch's father have from his youth? So what sort of technology does he describe when he was a kid? They'd have to wait for the weather. They'd have to wait for the weather. On TV. They didn't they couldn't just look at an app. What other technology did he talk about? Or did he show her maybe? Oh, the, um, that commercial? Yeah, the commercial. Was it a good quality commercial like we see now? Not really. So kind of a low quality commercial. Did he show her anything else? I don't remember. We're talking about anything else? No. I don't think so. So those are the two things that he talks about, right? That's not what I wanted to do. But how does this affect her idea of technology? What does it make her think about? Yeah, it makes her think about how we have weather apps. We have apps for weather and much better commercials. graphics for those commercials. So she starts reflecting on how things have changed. So basically you're answering the next two questions. I'm going to have you do them on your own. Uh, it doesn't need to be complete sentences. I know I wrote mine in complete sentence kind of, but it doesn't need to be. So the next one says, how do her father's memories contrast with Loesch's experiences? So Compare their childhoods. How are they different, basically? And then the last one, what thoughts about the future, the future, the future do these contrasts inspire in Loesch? So what are her thoughts about her future and talking to her kids about the future or the past technology? So those are your two boxes to answer. I'm going to give you guys about. I know it's really light. If it doesn't, well, I can still see it. So. Do your best, type it out. I don't know why it goes lighter, but I'll give you guys about four or five minutes on this one. So, um, well, hang on. the second one is um, 
What are the differences between their childhood? And then the next one is, so she's thinking about in the story, talking to her own kids about what her technology was. So how does she think technology will be different when her kids are around? Remember, she's like 14, so maybe in like 15 years. Well, that sounds about right. Like about That's true. She's 21, yeah. No, she's not. She's 23 or 24. Yeah, because I was born in 95 and I'm 25. Yeah. Yeah. So answer those quick couple of questions. I'll give you guys about three or four minutes to work on that. Right. Do we still need another minute or two to finish up this part? Yes, no, maybe so? No. No, you're good? All right. Let me check. I can see a couple of you guys still writing. So we'll do another two minutes. And then we will look at our last one that we got to do. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to close out of this and move on to the last part we're going to do. It probably won't save what I wrote, so oh well. So what we need to do now is our last question here. You're going to write one paragraph. So we're going to write at least five sentences on this one. Write a one paragraph response to Losha's thoughts at the end of the blog. Consider these questions. So you're answering these questions in your paragraph. Do you think people will continue to look back fondly on the technology of their youth or their childhood? And will they view current technology as a problem like Kaylin's father does? So two questions there. Basically, no, it needs to be a paragraph. You're writing a paragraph to answer those two questions, yeah. So at, write at least five sentences to answer those questions. And 
that's all we're doing today. So once you are done with that, we are done with ELA for today. Take a few minutes and write that out. And we have math at 10 o'clock, like normal. <laughs>